HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from the Hopkinton Middle School 5K as well as the Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill Ceremony, plus School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh has an update regarding the upcoming Hopkinton Schools Public Hearing. But first, here is a look at the Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill Ceremony. The Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill program honored five Hillers alumni with their annual Top of the Hill ceremony in the evening. During the day, the five honorees had an opportunity to talk to some of the classes at Hopkinton High School. Uh, Fairfield was legit the one school that I got into that wanted me to play softball at their school. That gave me some money to do that. Um, and it was two and a half hours door to door. So for me, I was getting a little bit away. And I knew I wanted a small school. Uh, During the day, there was a town-wide power outage, but fortunately, the generators kicked in and allowed the day to continue on. It's hard to know when you get out of school what you want to do, but you work at it and find something you really like and move on and keep going. Señorita Polanski me, me dio esa, este disco cuando uh, yo era un alumno. Creo que yo compré este disco, yo no sé. Uh, <laughs> pero, I graduated um, my senior year of high school football. I broke my neck into the third, fourth game in the season. So that meant uh, at that time that I was in the hospital from October until April. But I love kids and I leverage that and my unique way of thinking. Right? I got to go to Hopkinton High School and then prep school and colleges. We're so privileged here. In the evening, the top of the hill ceremony took place. Dr. Lynch is certified with the American Board of Radiology and is a member of the American College of Radiology. And I remember feeling guilty um, in the days and hours, even months after that injury, that I let them down and I wouldn't be available to help them out. Um, so it wasn't so much my feeling sorry for myself as it was um, feeling like I was letting my my team member's down. She has played a big role in the growth of the town through the positions she's held. Starting with a part-time position as a bank teller, she was recruited to work full-time at the town of Hopkinton Water Department in 1981, from, where, from which she retired in 2015. All right, how was it to be back at Hopkinton High School today and have a chance to talk to the students? It was great, and they were so nice and polite and asked good questions and I really enjoyed it, yeah. And how did it feel to get the call uh, for the that you're getting honored today? I was nervous. I said, why did they call me? <laughs> but then I got, after I thought about it a while, I said, oh, that, that's an honor. So I, I usually don't like to talk about myself too much, so. <laughs> She's made a significant impact on not only our community, but those all across New England. We'd like to recognize her for her achievements and exemplification of what it means to be a Hiller. The first started right here in the Hall of the Baking Test. Well, technically they were in the middle school where I graduated from, but you get the idea. Some of my fondest memories were made here in these classrooms and on those athletic fields. I built friendships here that still exist today and now our kids are growing up together. Back then, I even learned math at the old Golden Spoon where there were no computers or credit cards. I had to make change on the spot while customers were staring at me waiting for their money. Try to do that, try to make change today without a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
has drastically contributed to the com community in many ways, such as working as a paralegal for the U.S. Attorney in Boston to investigate healthcare fraud cases, designing and managing nurse-run medication system treatment programs for opioid and alcohol use disorders, and providing psychiatric care at community health centers in multiple languages. It was great to be back at, at uh, HHS. It's been a, a while since I've been back. And uh, the students were great. It was a great opportunity to uh, speak with them and, and uh, hear their stories and, and share mine and, and hopefully answer some questions. And, and they were all just uh, they were great kids. And how did it feel when you got the call that you were getting an award today for the Top of the Hill program? It was a great, uh, great feeling, great honor. Um, Josh, Hannah had uh, contacted me a couple months ago, and so I was surprised to, to see that and, and shocked and, and humbled and honored all at the same time. So it was a, it was a great honor to be here. And I have to ask, because I saw you talking to the uh, Spanish class today, how many different languages do you speak? <laughs> Oh, not barely English. I think this is the accurate answer to that, but uh, I think a few different ones. Maybe, maybe three. Maybe three. It was a terrific gift to get to reflect with the students and share about uh, just how much has changed in the school, how many even more opportunities are available, and to share a little bit about the work we do serving people with uh, communication disabilities and the kids in Brazil that we're partnering with and their families. So they were real receptive and we had a lot of good laughs, so that part was fun. And then there was a real serious part where I'm here with my daughter Madeline and uh, we just feel so lucky to have all that we have and uh, we want to recognize how much privilege we have and be thankful for um, all we have. It was. Uh, really highlighted by during the school day the power went out and they started making announcements about lunch and how they're going to bring in food from the elementary schools and you know these are high schoolers who have more than enough food all the time and uh, it was ironic and, and kind of fun that they were going to bring pizzas and order pizzas and such um, so overall it was a terrific time getting to spend time with Dr. Lynch uh, one of the inductees was incredible hearing his story about becoming a medical doctor and um, and then uh, Gene Scarletta, who graduated from the original high school, or one of the early high schools, was so fun. And, um, Matt Ellum and uh, Missy McDonald, it was really fun to see them again and share in their success. It was terrific. And uh, when you got the call that you were going to be honored today in the Top of the Hill program, how'd that feel? Oh, it was so humbling. It just made me feel thankful that uh, I get to share about what Hopkinton gave to me and that it also made me think and feel sad about my friend uh, Rory Horton who's a beautiful artist who uh, I met an artist today in the school uh, she, she was sitting here actually in this seat um, or right around this seat and uh, she seemed pretty disillusioned like my friend Rory was in high school but uh, she had a gift with art we talked about it and uh, I told her a story about this guy Mike Matas who Steve Jobs hired who I don't believe he finished high school but he had a brilliant gift with design and so uh, these things come around full circle and uh, these stories it's a gift to get to tell my story and how I had to overcome adversity and the resilience of the human spirit I'm just so thankful to have a soul that grew up in Hopkinton and uh, all the love. I'm looking over, my mother just came over here, so it's fun to uh, celebrate with family and uh, appreciate what we have. Thank you. School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh stopped by the HCAM studios to give an update on the December 5th Hopkinton Schools public hearing. Here's that update right now. Hello, Hopkinton families and residents. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, Superintendent of the Public Schools. I'm here with a very important announcement for all residents, all families. The Hopkinton Public Schools is going to be having a public hearing. That public hearing will take place on Thursday evening, December 5th, 2019 at Hopkinton High School. Our start time is 6 o'clock. It will be taking place before our regularly scheduled school committee meeting. Perhaps you're wondering what will you learn at this public hearing? It's no surprise to anyone in our community that our school enrollment is growing and growing very rapidly. With nearly 500 students over the last several years, 
When we take a look at the number of children we have and the sizes of our physical plants, it has come to our understanding that we need to start thinking about building additions and building new schools in the town of Hopkinton. And so what will that look like? I believe firmly that everyone in this community needs to come out to this forum so that you have a sense of where we're going with our school buildings in Hopkinton. So what will you learn? We'll be sharing information about our current enrollment in the schools. We'll be looking at enrollment projections, and these are very important in terms of the kinds of building we want to do in Hopkinton. We'll be looking at our physical plant needs. As I said, when we have 500 new students, that's the same number of students that we would put into the Elmwood School or the Hopkins School. And we've got all of these children here with no additional classrooms in the last several years. So it's really important that we start to think about what we're going to do on a temporary basis with our physical plants and what we're going to be doing long term with our physical plants. To that end, we'll be looking at a 10 year build out plan. And we'll be thinking about the impact of that construction on our academic programming. Essentially, when you build new schools, you have an opportunity to change and better develop the programming that you have. Just to give you sort of a little um, taste of the kinds of things we'll be looking at, these are the actual enrollments in the Hopkinton Public Schools from the period of 2009-2010 through 2019-20 currently. So we'll be showing families how our kindergarten enrollments have changed over time. In 2009-2010, we had 198 kindergarten students. In the 1920 school year, we had 269 students. If you carry this class out all the way to grade 10, which is where they are now, you can see that this class has grown from 198 students to 291 students. Almost 100 students have been added to that class. And if you take a look at the class that precedes them, we had 275 students who were in that first grade class. And even though these increments have grown more slowly, so you can see we've gone from 298 to 305, 305, 307, 308, 309, just very slow incremental change, that class too has gone from 275 to 327 students, an additional 52. We're going to look at some of the projections that we've received from the person who conducted our capacity study. Naturally, these are not numbers that are carved in stone, but these are scientifically based best guesses. What we'll also be showing you on Tuesday evening, December, Thursday evening, December 5th, is uh, some drawings of sort of potential um, locations for schools, configurations for schools, the actual physical plants themselves. And so it's very important that people come out and take a look to see where we're taking the district over the next 10 years. As you all know, the schools are really the centerpiece of this community. They are very largely the reason why people choose to move to Hopkinton. Naturally, there are other reasons as well, but we want to keep our schools sort of number one in the state, uh, which is where I believe we are today. Just as a little bonus, if you are coming out to join us on Thursday evening, December 5th at 6 p.m., Starting at 4 o'clock, as you know, we've renovated the White House, and so there's going to be just a very quick open house at the White House where we house the 18 to 22 program. We'd love for people to come out and see the program, uh, meet our students, and just get to see the facility as well. So I hope to see everyone on Thursday evening, December 5th. And I know that I continue to say the date and the time, uh, but it really is so important that the community gets out and understands where our public schools are going. I am very excited for the changes ahead of us, the changes in construction and the changes in academic programming. I hope that you are as well, and I hope that people will come because when you come out to hear what we have to say, you become informed citizens and informed voters. Again, I'm Carol Cavanaugh, Superintendent. If you have any questions about anything in this presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out to us in the central office. Thank you. Coming up next, the select board discusses the upcoming special town meeting, plus a look at the Hopkinton Middle School 5K. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. 
They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome back to HCAM News. The select board recently welcomed a new town employee and discussed the upcoming special town meeting. Here's a look. The select board confirmed the town manager's appointment for a treasurer. I am respectfully requesting the board affirm the town manager's appointment of Christopher Heymans as the town's next treasurer collector. Yeah, Chris is joining the town uh, with uh, five and a half years experience having worked for BNY Melon as the Vice President, Lead Manager and Partnership Accounting, Senior Supervisor. Uh, he also worked one and a half years with Kaufman Rosen Fund Services, uh, Citigroup Hedge Fund Services for four years, and he was at State Street for three years. Uh, he has uh, a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Um, when we spoke to his references, uh, a previous supervisor noted Chris's particular strength in developing internal controls and documenting business practices. I think as you have heard, uh, we are going full steam ahead in developing SOPs for everything that we do here at Town Hall. Yeah, I just have, I have one question. Your, your resume is outstanding. And um, you know, being a VP in the private sector and all of that sort of thing, I, my question is, why do you want to join municipal government? It's, it's a shift in my career I've been looking to take for a while. I've been pondering where I want to go from you know, where I was. And I've done a lot of time in the corporate world. Um, but I'm looking forward to having an opportunity to make a contribution at the end of the day and feel really good about what I do day in and day out. Fair enough. Well, that was actually very similar to what I was going to ask, is uh, why the shift from, public to pri uh, from private to public sector. I'm Irfan, by the way. Um, as a UMass grad, I'm uh, particularly happy to see you. Uh, OK, he's done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great community. I think you'll, you'll be really happy here. Thank you. Good. So, Chris, one question for you. You ever been stuck in a dryer? <laughs> dryer? I always look people's up Facebook. Oh, yeah. Up. <laughs> that was the Chris probably has young Santa. kids that said, when, Dad, I'll give you five bucks when, and get out of that thing. Whenever we have a, an applicant, I always bring up their Facebook. and. Uh, uh, that's, you get some pretty cool stuff going on your Facebook. So I'd recommend going there. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I don't think I can get out of that. <laughs> um, so anytime that Mr. Kamalu puts somebody in front of us after their rigorous interview uh, panels, plural, uh, there's a good chance that they've done their due diligence, checked into things, done your background check, uh, and you've passed muster. So um, I don't generally second guess unless there was something maybe odd that might come up on a Facebook page. <laughs> uh, so um, I, am, uh, I definitely feel that you uh, passed the muster. And I'm Brendan, by the way, and congratulations and welcome to the town. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. The select board also talked about the upcoming special town meeting. Come on. Yeah, through the chair, this is purely an administrative update. Uh, just want to remind the public that the special town me meeting one and closes November 21. Uh, to date, we have received the following articles. Number one, there is a citizen petition regarding the Main Street Corridor project with two components. One, rescinding uh, Article 47 vote from 218. Second piece uh, is uh, a request that town meeting direct the select board to seize all work relating to the Main Street Corridor project. Uh, the second petition is the one that the board just discussed. This is in relation to Legacy Farms North Road. We have also received 
um, four articles from the uh, school department. Uh, the first is requesting a sum of money uh, to complete the feasibility, schematic design, engineering and related services uh, for the renovation, alteration and associated improvements uh, at the Hopkinton High School. Uh, the second article uh, is requesting funding for um, the construction, reconstruction, renovation, alteration and associated improvements of the Hopkinton High School. In other words, design, mm -hmm. provide the uh, d uh, documents that are required for the construction, uh, and if approved, then move forward to the construction. And then third uh, is a request for a sum of money for the engineering, design, construction, reconstruction, renovation, or alteration, and associated improvements related to the purchase and installation of modular classrooms at the Elmwood School. And then the fourth article also is a sum of money uh, for the engineering, design, construction, reconstruction, renovation, or alteration in associated improvements related to the purchase and installation of modular classrooms at the Hopkins School. So those are the four articles from this uh, school department. And again, uh, the warrant is open until November 21. Hopkinton Middle School hosted a 5K as part of their physical education program, and many students participated. Yeah, Hopkinton Middle School hosted a 5K as part of their physical education. The cold weather did not stop many from participating and completing the course. So uh, first off, uh, what are your names? My Brian. name is Patricia. I'm Agnes. I'm Brian. All right, and you all ran today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How'd you enjoy the run? Um, it was fun. It was fun. I ran with all my friends. So. Good race. Terrific. Uh, so was this your first 5K? Yes. Nope. This is my third. And this is my fifth, I think. All right. How how was uh how was it running your first 5K for those of you that just uh, ran your first today? I mean, it was pretty fun. It was also tiring, but it was fun. <laughs> and uh, over here, how'd you like the course, and uh, how does it compare to other 5Ks you ran? Uh, I like the course. The loops, I think, like, just seeing the same thing over and over again sometimes is a little annoying, but uh, I still really like the course. <laughs> All right, terrific. And um, what was your times? I don't know. I don't know. Something like 24 minutes. Four minutes. All right. Well, congratulations. All right. So, a uh, bunch you. of people running a 5K today. Can you explain what this was all about? Yeah. So, in uh, the eighth grade phys ed program, we have an elective program, and the students get to choose what they do. And this first trimester is all about performance. And uh, we have 130 students running today. Uh, their choice for their PE electives was 5K training. So, this entire trimester, they've been following a training program and building up their mileage and their endurance and and putting all that in the tank and so today was their performance which was their 5k. Terrific and how did everything go out there? Everything went great and we had oh, close to 30 parent volunteers which was amazing. We had Mrs. Whale and Steph Whalen who always does a fantastic job coordinating the volunteers. Hopkinton PD was out there. We had our technology department out there filming. We had HCAM out there. Um, we, the kids did a tremendous job today. They all worked really hard for this so it was great. All right, excellent. And um, how long did they train to do this? Uh, they've been training since the second week of September. They're about nine weeks in or ten weeks in now, so into the training for it. So it's been great. All right, awesome. And uh, the student response was good. Yeah, it was great. They all uh, you could feel the energy in the building this morning as it was as it was a crescendo up to the race. So that was fantastic. That was awesome. 
A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, November 22nd at 5 p.m., local singer and songwriter Kate Frazzanelli performs her intimate music of love, joy, and heartbreak on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Saturday, November 23rd at 8 a.m., tune in for some classic cartoon shenanigans on a new episode of Toon Time. On Monday, November 25th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, November 26th at 7 p.m., Arthur Bergeron gives a presentation on elder law and getting the care you need on a new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, November 27th at 6 p.m., Tom Nappy takes a look at this year's Diwali Gala on a new edition of HCAM News Focus. And at 7 p.m., Arthur Bergeron talks with Hopkinton public health officials on getting access to health care on a new episode of Frank and Mary in Hopkinton. On Thursday, November 28th at 7 p.m., the Hillers girls classic football game will air on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers volleyball finals versus Needham game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, everyone, and we hope your Thanksgiving break is wonderful.